what's going on everybody welcome back to my channel it is your girl patrick kiera and today's video is going to be a little bit more on the creative side the fun side so for those of you who don't know outside of youtube and my full-time job i am also a part-time stylist i do freelance styling with a lot of photographers so in this video i'm basically going to show you guys how i create my mood boards and the whole process of creating mood boards to submit to photographers also make sure to like comment and subscribe if you guys want to connect with me outside Side of YouTube you can follow me on Instagram at Patrick Key era I'll make sure to leave it down below because I would love to connect with you guys outside of here So the first step to creating a mood board is finding inspiration. So inspiration can literally be drawn from anywhere. It's basically just visual references so that everyone knows exactly what you're going for with the theme of your shoot. So for instance, I typically like to go on Pinterest to find inspiration. I create a lot of boards on Pinterest. And the cool thing about Pinterest is that you can also share your mood boards with photographers or anyone else on the creative team and they can also add photos. So it's just a great way to have everything all together as far as the vibe of the shoots when you are working with a creative team on a project. So I also watch a lot of films, look at documentaries, magazines, books, just about anything to just get my creative juices flowing. I think that's the perfect way to just draw inspiration from other expressions of creativity. The next step is finding the ideal model that will fit the shoot. So typically, depending on what type of vibe that I have went over with the photographer or whoever else I'm working with on the creative team, I try to find a model that will suit the look for the shoot. So just wanting to see if they're able to provide the emotions, the poses, just the overall look for your shoot because the whole thing about a photo is to provide an emotion. So if you feel that a model cannot provide a certain emotion that you're going for with your audience, then you should probably try looking again. I tend to go on Instagram to look for models. Also, I sometimes just use my friends if it's just like a fun shoot. Just use your resources. Reaching out to people on Instagram is super easy. Just putting together like a short synopsis, even submitting the mood board to the models so that they can see exactly what type of shoot they be doing. Don't be afraid to reach out on Instagram because most of the times people are willing to shoot. Typically, I try to look for people whose followings aren't too high, but I still do shoot for the moon, so I do reach out to people who do have larger followings as well. It just depends on what shoot I'm going for, the team that I'm working with, because that also carries credits. So if you have photographers who may know models, or if you have hairstylists, makeup artists who may know models, that's also a great way to figure out who you can use for your shoot. It's all about your network at the end of the day. The next thing I look for is the hair and makeup inspiration. So typically after I've submitted the overall mood board to the photographer and they have approved of it, and also I have the model, then I look for hair and makeup artists because when I look for hair and makeup artists, I wanna be able to provide them with the mood board along with the photographer that I'm working with and the model that will be styled. Because their main job is to put together the models. So the next thing that you want for your mood board is a storyline or a layout. So something that's written that can give the team another idea of exactly what you're trying to portray with your shoe and your end result that you want overall. So for example, if I use the word love, I would also add the words emotions, passions, romance. Sometimes if they still have questions, just having those extra words or storyline will help them see exactly what you want to achieve at the end of the day. So the last thing that you guys will need is a location. So if you're working in a studio, it's typically easier to know exactly where you're gonna shoot. You won't really have to worry about a location. If you don't know anyone that has a studio, you guys should check out Peerspace. They have different studios that you can rent out hourly at different rates. So depending on what your budget is, you can rent some really cool spots out if you need to. If you plan on shooting outside, then you just have to make sure that you scout the perfect location for the shoot. So if I'm doing a romantic shoot, maybe I wanna shoot in a very vintage 
vintage -y type of restaurant or maybe in the streets of New York. Just depending on what your mood board is and what your overall goal is for your photo shoot, you want to make sure that you choose the right location. You can also have the photographers and other people on the creative team help you out with this um, because I'm sure they've shot at a lot of different places. So really it's just all about using your resources at the end of the day. Good tips to know um, when you're shooting outside is the lighting. So you need to know exactly when the sun rises and when it sets. You have to make sure that the weather is perfect on that day. There's just a lot that goes into it. You you want to make sure it's an area that's not too crowded because you don't want a lot of other people in your your shoot unless that's what you're going for um, so just making sure that you plan everything ahead of time is super important for a successful photo shoot if you guys enjoyed this video today make sure to let me know down in the comment section below if you have some other tips for people who are trying to work with the creative team on a photo shoot make sure to leave them below I hope that this helped a little bit and I'll see you in my next video Bye.